The story begins when the main character was fired from his job. Lily's manager, packed up all his things and told him to leave their office as soon. Lin thought it was unfair because he was serious about his job and he was fired because he didn't send a gift to his boss. He decided to call his girlfriend to tell her the sad news, but she wouldn't listen to him and told him they were breaking up. She told him not to come to her birthday party and never call her again. Lin asked her if she found another guy, she said, so what if she did, because she dated him a long time ago, but he hasn't changed a bit and is still the same loser. The main character was very disappointed because today he was fired from his job and his girlfriend dumped him. Suddenly the elevator doors opened before him and he was met by a beautiful girl she greeted her new master and said her name is Lin Wei, she is a system girl in the system of all professions. And now she is his servant. Wei told him that now he can try out a new profession every week at random, and by completing all tasks, he will get the highest reward, and she would help him become world famous. Lin was incredibly happy and was given a reward of 100,000 yuan for accepting the profession of driving, as well as 100% control of the shares of the Bandao Hale Hotel and a Pagani Zonda car worth 30 million. He said he was willing to work as a driver for life if all this stay with him. But Wei said that this profession is given to him for a week, not for life. Lin exclaimed that this is even better, since you can get so much money and do different things every week. Wei informed him that the Bandao Hotel demands that he drive up there, and the Pagani Zonda car is in the parking lot of Chaoyang Corporation. Lin could not believe that that this was all happening to him. He came to the parking lot of Zone C to pick up his supercar, and since the parking lot of Zone C was for serious people, he met the CEO there, her name is Qin Yan. She was standing by her car and couldn't understand why her car wouldn't start. Lin approached her and asked what happened to her car, Qin Yan recognized him as he worked in the sales department, she told him that she couldn't get her car to start. Lin offered her a ride, she agreed as she had to go to the construction company, but unfortunately she was already late. Suddenly Li came up to her and said that such a small worker, like Lin, couldn't have a nice car and offered her a ride in her sports car. But she pushed him away and told him not to touch her, but Li insisted and offered her a ride in his car, which he bought for 20 million yuan. Lin replied to Director Li, he said he would give the CEO a ride himself and his car is worth 22, but Li didn't believe him and said his car was very old. But Qin Yen said she didn't care what condition Lin's car was in as long as it was roadworthy. But at that moment Lin went to his 30 million yuan car and said it was his new car. Li didn't believe him and asked if he knew how much it was worth anyway. Lin took out the key to the car and told Director Z to get in the car. Li exclaimed to him that he tried to get a Pagani Zonda, but he never succeed. He came up to Lin and apologized for his words and asked to ride in his car, but Lin told him to get out of here and he was not worthy to sit in that car. Qing asked him really his car, after all he was an ordinary employee in the sales department. Lin said that he is actually from a wealthy family who lead an ordinary life. And since he is going to become a driver, so she will be his first passenger. Ten minutes later Lin brought her to the marked points he paid for her train and thanked him for his help. Wei congratulated him on completing his first order and awarded him 50 skill points, and for finishing his career at 5% he received 50 million yuan. Hotel Bandao is a five-star hotel and one of the few best hotels in Zhonghai. At this time main character's ex-girlfriend her name is Lu Sai Sai was there, she had a new boyfriend, his name is Yun Chia, they came here to celebrate her birthday there, and he was not sorry to spend 80,000 yuan for a separate room. She hugged him and wished she had met him earlier, but he asked her, wasn't it Lin who came into the hotel? She wondered what a pauper like him was doing here, she thought he came here to get her back. But Lin answered her that he came here to spend his money in this ordinary hotel. But his ex-girlfriend's new boyfriend said that this is not an ordinary hotel and people of Lin's status can't even come in here. At that moment, 
Sisa told the guards to kick the beggar outside. Suddenly, the guards ran up to him and said they were happy to see Mr. Lin. Sisa didn't understand how it was possible that Lin being a sales worker was able to take a management position in this hotel. The manager asked Lin to go to the meeting room as they needed to report to him. Sisa stood in a stupor as she realized that she missed out on a rich guy. After a while the manager gave him the financial report and asked to see the documentation. But Lin said he didn't need it and asked him to keep working at the same pace as before. At this time the girl ran into the office and turned to manager Wang, she said that the customer in room 1704 wants to complain about them and can never stop her. Wang asked her why she wanted to complain. She said that yesterday she applied to rent a car from their hotel, but the Mercedes she wanted to rent was already taken by a VIP customer, but she doesn't want another car and so she wants to complain. Lin said that he would solve the situation himself and told them to do the documentation. He came to room 1704 and introduced himself as the hotel manager, he said he was willing to arrange everything properly to keep her satisfied. But Gu stood there in shock and didn't understand where the handsome man had come from. She confusedly replied that it wasn't that important anymore and they could just arrange another car for her. Lin told her that if she didn't mind, she could take his Pagani. Gu replied that she didn't have enough money to rent a car like that, plus she'd heard that such cars were not that common and wasn't sure it would be okay. Lin said that he could give her a ride wherever she wanted Gu was glad and asked him to wait for her as she needs to change. She offered to go into her room so he could wait for her, Lin saw her changing and was shocked, after 10 minutes she put on a beautiful dress and said she was ready to go. At this time in the common hall, Sissy told her new boyfriend to get away from her as in minutes Lin would come down and he might think they were dating. Yoon was mad at her and called her a bitch and said that after what she did to him, he wouldn't even look at her. A friend asked her if she thought that after she dumped Lin, he would agree to date her again. Sis answered that she had been with him for many years, and there were definitely feelings between them, and if she pressed for pity, he would surely forgive her. At this time Lin was walking along with the girl, SYSSY saw this and ran to him and exclaimed, Honey, who is she? Your secretary, if you want I will now help you with all your business. Lin looked at her with disdain and asked her, who is she anyway? SSI started to cry and said, after all these years, does he no longer love her, because even though his new girlfriend has a better body than hers, but her skills are not as good as hers. But the new girlfriend asked her how could he know that her skills are not as good as hers, because Lin had already praised her for that she was better than her ex-girlfriend. At that moment Lin hugged her and said that she was not only skilled but also soft. They started to leave, but Sai Sai exclaimed how could he do that to her, since they had been lovers for years. Lin asked her what to love her for, for being a liar or for being ugly, or perhaps for having a bad figure. Saisa was very hurt to hear these words and she fell to her knees and began to cry. At this time Lin and Gu got into the car, he asked her where she should be taken. Gu said she had to go to Qinxiu Hotel because her classmate was celebrating a wedding, she apologized to him for stressing him out. But Lin told her that she had just helped him get rid of his ex-girlfriend. At this time her friend were waiting for her near the entrance they didn't understand why she was so late, they didn't believe her when she told them she had a new boyfriend and he gave her a Mercedes, besides they had rich boyfriends and didn't know anyone who took Gu with them. At that moment Gu got out of the car and told Lin that it was his turn to help her. He exclaimed to her, honey, have a good time at the wedding, at that moment her friends believed everything she said and began to envy her because their guys didn't have such an expensive car. A few hours later Zhang took the phone from her mother and told her that Lin had paid for these 10 days and she had nothing to worry about. And asked her to wait a few days and not rush Lin. Lan said, what if he ran away and she shouldn't rely on him too much, after all, she is going to become a civil servant and got involved with someone like Lin. 
Unexpectedly Lin entered the apartment and told Theta that he was moving out and so came in to say goodbye and he would leave after he packed his things. She asked him unhappily, did he really want to leave without paying the rent? Lin told her that she misunderstood him and he would pay her the rent. He wired her 4,000 yuan, and she said that he made a mistake about the payment because the rent was 2,000 yuan. But Lin said that it was as an apology for always being late with the rent. She asked him what he was going to do next and what his plans were, but he said it was nothing serious and he would starve. Lon offered to help him carry his things. Going downstairs Auntie went along with them to make sure Lin didn't steal anything. As they came out of the driveway, Auntie saw a new car and wondered who parked this beautiful car. She asked Lin where he parked his car. Lin said his old car broke down and he decided to buy himself a new car, he asked Lon to put his stuff in the trunk. The aunt couldn't believe it since Lin worked a regular job, she asked him did he manage to become so rich. He said that all this he was pretending to be poor and in fact he was from a rich family. At night Lin returned to his hotel, they prepared a presidential suite for him and cooked a very good meal. Qin Yen texted him and said he would be free soon and could he meet her at the main entrance of the construction company, he texted her that he would be there in 30 minutes. Upon arriving at the place, Lin jokingly asked her if she could order first. She got in the car and didn't understand what order she was talking about, he replied that she should go into the app and make an order so that he would know where they should go. Qin wondered, because he had a $30 million car and was supposed to be in the top sales company, but now he has been fired and it is understandable why he asks for an order. But she did not understand how such a serious person could be fired, Ching speculated that maybe something happened and she just did not know about it and she decided to find out about it a little later. Suddenly Wei appeared told him not to worry because no one sees her but him. Wei said that this girl is very beautiful and rates her a 4 plus. She congratulated him on successfully getting his second order and starting the system job of transporting two beautiful girls with a 4 plus rating. Wei awarded him 10,000 skill points and a 50% completion rate. He asked her which girls are rated a 4 plus, she happily replied that girls like Qin. Qin asked him when they would go and she said he looked like he had even more serious problems than she did. He asked if she had problems, personal or work-related. Qing replied that the company wanted to do a launch presentation, and she had called all the five-star hotels, but none of them were available because they were all booked. Lin suggested she do the presentation at the Bandao Hotel. Qing asked not to make her laugh, because the Bandao Hotel is a five-star high-end hotel, and booking a place there is considered impossible. He said that is not necessarily true and life is full of surprises, just as they met today, maybe she will get a surprise if she gets there. She laughed and said that if that is the case, then let him turn the car around and go to the Bandao Hotel. But in case they can't make an arrangement with the hotel, she will not pay for this trip. Lin asked, what happens if it works out? She asked him what he wanted in return if he won this bet. Lin told her if she does make the deal, he has to do 10 deep squats. Qin wondered, what is that? He told her to look on the internet, when she saw it, she told him that these exercises are a little frank. Qin had previously called the Bandao Hotel, and the manager said that there are no more places, so she decided to accept without risking anything. And she agreed to the bet. After a while they arrived at the hotel and Qin asked the receptionist to talk to manager Wang. She offered to go to the lobby to talk to Wang, she thought, is this the new love that the boss met, again pretending to be poor. They walked into the hall and Qin asked the manager if there were any vacant seats in the auditorium of the Bandao Hotel since she wants to make a presentation there. Lin quietly showed an OK sign, and the manager understood him, he replied that he could arrange for her presentation any day she wanted. Qing was incredibly happy and said she planned to make a presentation in 10 days. They got back in the car and she found it hard that she had managed to book the auditorium. 
Lin told her that now it was her time to fulfill her promised wish. She replied that she would definitely keep her word since she was the president of Chaoyang. He unbuckled his seatbelt and Qing asked embarrassedly what was he doing, after all, they're in the car and they can do it at home. Lin said they can do it in the car too and it all depends on whether or not director Qing likes it here. She tried to do it, but she was too tight and suggested she do it at home. After five minutes they arrived at Yunshui Cottage and Qing asked if she could start doing squats right away. Lin said she could start because he still had things to do. Qing said she'd never done it before, so she asked him not to complain if she didn't get it right the first time. She tried hard to do the deep squats correctly, Lin was pleased with the way she did the squats and in addition, she got it right the first time. Suddenly her dad walked into their room and asked in surprise, what are they doing here? She asked him what he was doing here. Her dad asked her, where is he supposed to be if not in his house? Ching told daddy that he got it all wrong, and this guy is her new yoga instructor. He told her, does she think he doesn't understand anything, because yoga instructors don't watch from the outside, but always at the ready. Ching tried to convince him, but daddy didn't believe her and told her to leave and he needed to talk to him. Daddy sat down with Lin and asked what his name was and what he did. Lin said his name and said he was a cab driver. Dad was puzzled, because to get his daughter's attention, the guy must be driving at least a sports car. Lin replied that he was right and he owned a sports car. Dad asked him if he owned that limited edition sports car outside their house. He said that Lin is better than those majors who only spend their parents' money and was willing to put his daughter in his hands. But Ching told Daddy that they didn't have that kind of relationship and Daddy replied grudgingly that he had completely stopped understanding young people. Daddy suggested they come together for Grandpa Ching's 80th birthday and that way the rest of the family would get to know Lin. And told them that he was leaving and they could continue with what they were doing. Ching was very uncomfortable as her father misunderstood everything. But he put her on her back and said it was even better, and suggested they continue. Ching asked what to continue, because her father misunderstood them. Lin said that when she squatted, he saw her muscles tense. But Ching asked not to touch her muscles, because they are very sensitive. Lin said that was true, because this type of exercise stresses that muscle group. Ching thought, he just meant that, so I'm the one who got it wrong. Unexpectedly, he got a text saying that after he was fired, his colleagues were very sad, so they suggested having an evening dinner at Yipinkyu as a farewell. Lin told Principal Ching that he had some business and suggested he meet next time for the remaining nine squats. He arrived at the restaurant and a colleague told him that she had specifically made room for him. Wang Ying didn't think he would quit, because with his level he could easily become head of sales. Huang rather told her if she knew what she was talking about, because he was as good as he was and why did she think that the sales position should have gotten Lin. Wang Ying said that Lin has more achievements than Huang, and the director's position should have gone to him. Huang offered to drink to the fact that the appointment papers will soon come. Duong said not to do so, even though he will soon become director of sales today the main character is Lin and so he lacks the spirit to take over. Lin told them that the two of them are not here to see him off but to brag. They replied that he is wrong and they are here to celebrate his firing, Dun asked what he plans to do now, and it's not easy in the big city and suggested he go back to his village. Huang said, what other village, Lin is an orphan and has no home, he can't go anywhere. Dong offered him a drink, but Lin said that he is now a driver and he might have orders, so he is not drinking today. Suddenly the administrator came running to them and asked who owned the Pagani Zonda car. This moment, Huang, Dong and others looked out the window and really saw this sports car, the receptionist said that this car was blocking the other car's exit and he wanted to ask the owner to move it. Lin said he would now move it. Huang exclaimed to him that the receptionist said Pagani, not his old car. 
Lin pulled out the car keys and said that Pagani is his car. Huang couldn't believe it, since he thought all along that Lin was an orphan, he awkwardly asked him where he got the money to buy a sports car. He replied, can't an orphan have a lot of money? He got bored in this restaurant and offered to driving home, she couldn't refuse him and agreed to go with him. Ng was very happy, as it was the first time she had sat in such a car. She said she had worked with him for so long and didn't even know he was so rich. He told her that it was inherited and he usually doesn't boast about his wealth. Ng asked him if it was true that he worked as a driver. Lin said he hadn't lied to her and asked her to make a reservation. She agreed and couldn't refuse him. He received a notice that his total passenger score was 84, which didn't meet the job requirements. Lin was surprised because Ng was so beautiful and why couldn't he be given an extra point? He couldn't take his eyes off her beauty, Ng asked him why he was looking at her like that. Lin asked if she knew any way to enhance a woman's charm. She said that enhancing charm means making yourself attractive, and there is nothing difficult about it. Suddenly she took out black stockings from her purse and put them on her legs. Then she adjusted her dress and said it is done like this. He received notification that his total score is 85 points and meets the task requirements, thanks to this 15% career was completed, he received Villa Juzhauj as a reward. Lin stopped in front of her house and she suggested he come over to her house for coffee, since her husband is currently on a business trip. Lin said that unfortunately he had things to do and offered to meet next time. The next morning Lin went to Juzhauj sales department. At the entrance he was met by his former colleague Zhang, she was surprised to ask what he was doing here. He said he came to the manager for the title deeds. Zhang didn't believe him and started to kick him out, because the property here is worth over 800 million. But at that moment manager Hui came up and told him to stop immediately. Manager Hui took his hand and offered to show him the house, but Zhang told her that she would waste her time since Lin is a former colleague and he can't afford the villa. Hui told her to shut up and get out of here so she would never see her again. Zhang tried to talk her down, but Hui exclaimed that Lin had already bought nine villas from them. Zhang couldn't believe it and fell to the floor in surprise. Hui apologized to him for Zhang's behavior, she said that Zhang had been under a lot of pressure L. Lin told her that his house registration should already be complete, he asked and they could give him the title deeds. Hui said it was already done and gave him all the title deeds and keys to the nine villas. After a while Lin got in his car and Ng texted him that Lily and Li had been fired. Lin chuckled because he had just left and they had been fired so quickly. He texted Qing and asked if she had fired them, she replied that she wanted to know the reason he was fired and thought it would make him feel better. Lin asked what her plans were for the sales manager position, Qing said she wanted to give him the position. But Lin told her not to do that since he was already earning well and offered to give the position to Ling. Qing asked him to take her to the company. Wei told him if he could complete the task, he could get 5 stars reward 200,000 points and the completion percentage of the profession is 25%. Lin asked Qing to give him 5 stars. Qing said she was willing to give him 5 stars, but for that he would cancel her punishment with squats. Suddenly he leaned into her face, she exclaimed what is he doing? Lin said in that case he didn't need 5 stars and she should do 9 squats and not one less. She got embarrassed and got out and started to clean herself. At that moment Ng saw this and asked her, what is she doing here? Lin answered for Qing and said that he accidentally saw Principal Qing call a cab. Ng wondered why Lin was panicking and making excuses for Qing. She thought it was no surprise that the two employees were fired and refused to talk to her, Ng thought Lin and Director Qing had something in common and thought she was doomed. At this point Qing told her to go back to the office and get to work. After they left, Lin was notified that he got five stars. His next order was Jenny House decided not to refuse the order. 
Unexpectedly a customer called him and asked him how old he was, Lin surprisedly said he was 24. She asked him to pretend he was her boyfriend and for that she would give him five stars. Five minutes later he arrived at the appointed address. He was opened the door by the popular blogger Xian, seeing him she said he was very handsome and even handsomer than their in turn. At that moment her parents came up to him and asked if he was their daughter's boyfriend. They told him he didn't look too bad and asked what does he do. Lin told them his name, and said he works as a driver. Hearing this they were extremely unhappy that their daughter was dating a driver, but Xian said that the driver's job is very lucrative, and he was the one who bought all her jewelry, and now he's saving money to start his own business. The father indignantly replied that 9 out of 10 entrepreneurs go bankrupt, he asked her, what was she thinking anyway? Xian didn't want to continue this conversation and asked them, weren't they going to go to a meeting with their friends? After all, she called her boyfriend to drive them there and after that, she would go with him to the mall. Lin awkwardly replied that he had a two-seater car and they would have to call for another car, the parents were shocked, they thought Lin was riding a moped. They went outside and the father indignantly told his daughter, why the hell did she even start dating a guy who rides a moped? But after they walked up to his car and Lin pulled out the keys, the father immediately changed his mind because he knew that these cars cost a lot. Lin got in the car and the parents immediately started telling their daughter to get in his cars immediately and they would call another cab. He asked her which mall he needed to go to, she told him to go to Times Square. Xian asked him if she could go live, because she is a popular blogger. Lin happily said she could do whatever she wanted, but only if she gave him five stars. She agreed and went live, all her viewers were surprised when they saw her in a Pagani Zonda car, some of the haters started writing insults to her. But she asked them to calm down, because she ordered the driver through the app but Xian thought if Lin asked for a body flaming, she would not mind. Ten minutes later he brought her to her destination and Xian gave him five stars. Wei congratulated him for completing the task and getting 200,000 points and completing his career at 35% as a reward he received the China International Circuit, driving skills. Lin was surprised, as it is the best track, other than the Abu Dhabi circuit. Suddenly he stopped Xian and asked if she knew about phones as he wanted to change his phone. Xian said she did and would be happy to help him. They went to Yali's cell phone store. Walking around the store he liked the new phone as it had lots of memory. Xian said surprisingly that he'd better buy it online as it could be much cheaper. But Lin said he wanted to buy it here, and after all they didn't come here for nothing. After buying the phone, the salesman suggested he choose a case, because his phone costs more than 10,000 yuan and it will need to be protected. Lin said that he doesn't really like cases, because that way, he feels uncomfortable. And if something happens to his phone he will just buy a new one, and at this point he decided to buy five pieces of each color. The salesman was shocked, because there are only 20 pieces of these phones but Lin didn't care and said he would buy another computer. Xian was perplexed and didn't understand where he got so much money, at this time there were already over 5 million viewers on her broadcast. After buying the phones and computer, she asked him if he wanted to buy something else. He saw a Vacheron Dunn watch and said it was time to buy a watch. One of the saleswomen recognized the blogger Xian, she told her that she could approach her and she would go to see her, but the other saleswoman said there was no point and it was just a waste of time, Xian was broadcasting live and it was all a show. Because Vacheron Dunn is only for really wealthy people who can really afford a watch. Xian prices for their watches and was shocked as the prices started from 200,000 yuan. Lin liked the watch and asked to show him the watch. But he was told that unfortunately they can only pick it up after paying. Xian didn't understand this, because how can you buy a watch without even looking at it? Unexpectedly a man came into the store with his girlfriend, the staff greeted him respectfully and asked what they could do for him. 
His girlfriend saw a gold watch and asked to buy it for her birthday, the man agreed and bought it. She was told she had great taste and it was a new model. Suddenly Lin exclaimed furiously, what does all this mean, after all, they are the same customers, and they should treat everyone equally. He was told that they provide services according to customer status. He realized that whoever has more money, and before them they bow more. XIN tried to stop him saying that these luxury stores all treat customers this way. The saleswoman told them to tell them thank you for letting them into the store, because Patek Phil would have kicked them out long ago. Lin and Xian were extremely unhappy about this and they went into the Patek Phil watch store. A saleswoman met them at the entrance and asked them how she could help them. Lin said he didn't know much and asked what she could recommend. Xian said she could ask her viewers. The viewers advised him to buy a 175 model, but upon hearing this the saleswoman was shocked by this choice. The viewers wrote to stop pretending, and he really doesn't have the money. Xian said she could block them out but Lin said not to do that and let them look. Lin said to show him the 175 model. At this point all the salesmen stood in a stupor and asked him, does he really want to buy them? He took out his card and said that he would be glad to buy it, because many people advised him to buy this particular model. The salesman said that this watch is out of stock and should be brought from Europe and they will be ready to deliver it to his house. Xing asked them why such a prestigious and large store does not have these watches in stock, she was told that there were only six copies of this watch in the world, but only one had been shipped to China and it was out of stock in China. The news that someone had bought a watch worth more than 10 million yuan reached the clerks at the Vacheron Dunn store and they ran to see the buyer. But when she saw Lin she couldn't believe it, she begged his forgiveness and invited him into their store. Lin told her that his status wasn't enough for him to enter their store. She begged him not to leave because he had just lost a huge commission. Lin and Xian walked out of the mall and he gave her a new phone for shopping with him. She was embarrassed and said he had a good time with him she didn't want to miss out on a guy like that because he was very polite to her, and also very rich. After the mall, Lin went to China International Raceway. At the reception he was told that they have VIP receptions today so they are closed today. Lin told them that he came here no way customers and he needed to talk urgently with their manager. The girl asked to wait for him, but at that moment Han came and indignantly exclaimed, what the hell are the unauthorized people here because yesterday he told them to clear the area of unauthorized people. She told him that Lin came to see the manager and he had nothing to worry about, the other girl asked Lin to go quickly to the second floor so as not to make Mr. Han angry. Lin asked who he was, and why he treated everyone so badly. She asked him, does he not know Mr. Han? This is the famous Han, and not many people in Zhonghai would dare cross him. Lin went up to the second floor and was met by manager Haidao, he was not expecting this meeting and wondered why he did not call, because this way he would arrange a meeting with the team. Haidao told Zhao why she is standing still and told her to bring water to director Lin. She wondered, is he their new director? The manager happily said that Lin had bought out their racetrack. Haitao said there were all the company's files on the table and asked to see them, but Lin said he trusted him and asked him to keep working as before and if there were any problems he could contact him. Lin asked Haitao to walk him to the racetrack. When they got to the racetrack, Haitao asked if he wanted to do some laps, but Lin refused and asked to get one of the racers. At this point Han saw Lin and Haitao near the road and immediately stopped. He indignantly asked why the hell there were outsiders at the racetrack, since he had booked the place yesterday. Hightower replied that Han misunderstood everything, because Director Lin is the only owner of China International Raceway, and he came here to inspect his possessions. Han and his friends could not believe it slash. Suddenly Lin turned to Hato said he wanted to ride a few laps and asked to take the bystanders out and reimburse them. Han took out his cigarettes and said no one in Zhonghai had ever allowed him to be treated this way, 
he offered to ride a few laps with him, and the winner would stay on the racetrack Lin agreed to his condition. Han asked him not to be afraid, even though he was called a car god, but he was willing to give him a 10 second head start, Lin offered to drive two laps, because he had wanted to try his car for a long time. Han told him if he thought his car was too good he would be willing to trade it in for another. But as soon as he saw his car he was shocked, Lin told him that this car was not very expensive, but this car was probably better than his. Han replied that he had spent over 3 million on tuning and it would not be inferior to his car at all. Ten minutes later they arrived at the start of the racetrack and the girl gave the countdown. After starting they accelerated to 100 km per hour with great speed, a corner was ahead, and Han started reducing speed but Lin was getting ready to go into the corner at speed. Even professional drivers don't dare to go into a corner at that speed, one little mistake and you could die. But Lin managed to steer and go into the corner, all of Han's friends were very surprised. During the whole race, Lin stayed in front and Han couldn't overtake him and Lin passed the finish line first. The two flagging cars were happy, because their new boss is very cool. Han bowed to Lin and said that he admits his loss. He wondered how he started faster than him in his car without any tuning. Lin said he didn't start correctly, because he had to push the clutch at 4000 RPM to reduce engine power, and then change gears. Han didn't want to lose contact with Lin, so he asked if he had WeChat. Lin pulled out his phone and saw that he had a new order to Yunshue Villa. He hurriedly left and told manager Haitao to come a little later and let Han and his friends ride at his expense. Han asked what was the rush, because he wanted to ride with him again. Lin replied that he was a driver and he now had a new order. After a while Lin arrived at the address and was met by Qin she didn't expect him to come so quickly and so she didn't have time to get ready. But unexpectedly he told her that he wasn't in any hurry. Qin became uncomfortable and offered to go home to wait for him inside while she dried her hair, she offered to watch a movie. While she was in the bath, Lin told her that she had an email but Qin asked her to ignore it since it was probably for business. But Lin smirked and said it didn't look like a business letter since it said her black lace underwear had been sent. Lin noticed another letter and wanted to read it, but at that moment Qing ran out of the tub and told him not to watch her mail. But since she was wet she slipped on the tiles and Lin wanted to hold on to her robe, but it turned out she hadn't tied her robe and he accidentally pulled her robe off. Seeing this he was incredibly surprised, and Qing was very embarrassed. Lin wanted to say that the second letter was spam and she unexpectedly ran out. Fifteen minutes later Qin was ready, she asked him if he liked it, after all, she was going to go to the reunion. Lin replied that such a dress would be suitable for both a beauty contest and squat. She said remember your promise. Qin asked him to close the curtains and she would be ready to do nine squats. He ran to close the curtains. Qing held her dress and started squatting, after squatting she said she had kept her promise and asked to take her to Zhongtan. But Li asked to wait for him and he ran to the bathroom. After a few minutes he returned and they were about to leave, but at that moment Qing's parents came in. Father asked in surprise, did they finish so quickly? Qing blushed and asked when they came back and what was he talking about, Dad replied that he saw them closing the window with curtains and that's why he and Mom didn't dare go in. Mom asked why she was shy, because it's a normal adult need and she and Dad understand everything. Ching said she was just changing clothes, but Mom didn't believe it and asked how long she just changed clothes with a guy in the same room. Dad told his wife that they were extra here and they should go. But before she left, Mom told Lin that he was no stranger to them and he should come to Grandpa's birthday party the day after tomorrow. Lin couldn't refuse and said he would come on time and suggested that Qin go to her reunion. Fifteen minutes later they were there and Lin asked her to give him five stars and when she finished he could come get her and take her home. She told him that he was willing to go all out for a good review. 
Lin said that was his job and she could call him if she had any problems. Wei informed him that he had reached the 100 mile mark and was rewarded with 200,000 skill points, and the career completion rate had reached 55% and he got 21% of Baba's stock. Lin could not believe such a generous award, he asked if he could own Baba if he got more mileage. Wei answered that the headquarters of the company is in Yenchen, its market value exceeds 50 billion. If he sells his share, he can get 10 billion. He hugged her and said that with his current income he has no reason to do that, because it is better to get a few million a year dividend. Wei informed him that his career completion rate has reached 55% and if he fulfill another 35% then he can start a new career. However, if 100% career completion is achieved the rewards will be more generous. Lin wanted to complete 100% career and strongly exclaimed that he was ready to complete more orders. His next order was a train from Starbucks to Juzho. After this order he planned to go home immediately. Three minutes later he pulled up to a girl who was hailing a cab, her name is Yen. When she saw him she couldn't believe it, she thought she wore those clothes for a reason. She got into his car and asked her he wanted to take her, but Lin wondered why she asked such a question, after all in the app she herself indicated the destination Juzhouch. Yen wondered even more, she asked if he was a driver from Baba, then why drive a sports car, Lin told her it was a new service. She got upset and said she thought she had picked up a rich guy and he turned out to be an ordinary driver. Lin was angry with her, he wanted to drive her as fast as possible to free himself, but suddenly she exclaimed to him that he was driving slower because if he did something to the car, he wouldn't be able to pay for it for the rest of his life. Lin angrily told her that it was his personal car. But she didn't believe him and started laughing at him, she said did he really want to get her that way? After all, he works as a rental car driver and pretends to be rich. Lin asked her, what is she like? Yen said that she was clearly nobler than him, and he wasn't even worthy to be her driver. At that moment, he sharply pressed the brake pedal and told her to get the hell out of his car and he wouldn't take her anywhere else. After getting out of the car, she started threatening him with a bad review and promised to call and complain about him. Lin said how dare she insult him and also write a bad review, but luckily he has a DVR in his car and she can't do anything. He came to Juzho and Yen did leave him a bad review. That moment he received a call from the Baba manager, he was asked what was the matter because he had just received a complaint from the headquarters, and if it happens again, they will deduct money from his salary. Lin told the manager to do whatever he wanted, because he didn't care. The manager was extremely unhappy with these words and suspended him from his job as driver. He was angry at the manager and asked, how dare he not understand the situation and suspend him from his job. Had he thought well of the consequences, but the manager shouted how dare he threaten him and hung up on. In Juzho he was met by the Juzho property manager. He began to be shown the apartment where all the furniture was from only the best manufacturers, in addition all the upholstered furniture designed by top international designers. He liked everything and the manager said that they selected his servants, who passed the first stage of the interview now in the office, he asked if he had time to look at them. And since Lin no longer worked as a driver, he decided to meet them. When he went down to the office he was seen by Yen, who left him a bad review. The manager asked her what she was doing and how dare she treat Mr. Lin like that, she said Lin is the same driver she met on the road. Lin asked manager Zhou why is this woman here? Was she applying for a position? Yen exclaimed, why is this driver from Baba here? Does he know what this place is all about? Manager Zhou slapped her and told her to shut up, because Mr. Lin is their boss. She called the manager her brother and told him that Lin can't be the boss, and he is just an ordinary driver from Baba and she has an order in her phone. Lin asked the manager, isn't there such a condition that a driver can't be the owner of Jaya's house? The manager said there is no such condition. 
He told Yen to apologize to Mr. Lin immediately, but she couldn't believe it, that Lin is the owner here, she thought, maybe he has a hobby of being a cab driver. She got down on her knees in front of him and said she was very wrong and asked for another chance. Lin told manager Zhou to kick her out. Out of five maids left only four, the manager asked to choose the ones he liked the most. But Lin said that he wasn't satisfied with any of them, he told the manager to pay 5,000 yuan each for travel. At this point Qing texted him and asked him to come to Zhongtan. Lin told the manager that he had urgent business and told him to choose a new servant himself. At this time his friend didn't want to let Qin go, and offered to have some more fun. Ding came up to them and asked her to stay as he hadn't seen her in years, and after that, he would take her home himself. Qing insisted and said that she still had work to finish, and besides, she had already ordered a car, but her friend said it's not safe to take a cab now and Ding should drive her himself. Lin walked into the hall and Qing's friend saw him, she was surprised to ask, is this handsome man her friend, after all, he could be a star. Ding disgruntledly said, what's the use of being handsome if he still works as a driver? Lin was extremely unhappy with his words. Ding laughed at him and told Qing that her friend is not very smart because he works in a cab and acts so confident. Qing came up to Lin and said that he really has no self-esteem problem. But her friend told her that self-esteem will not go far and Ding bought himself a brand new Mercedes-Benz full of features, but Baba's driver will never earn one. Qing turned to Lin and said they shouldn't stoop to their level and suggested they leave here. But Ding didn't want to let them go for nothing, he didn't understand why Qing was so nice to Lin He wanted to show them what real wealth is. Out in the parking lot, he started his car and his friend said this car is so expensive, Dean said his car cost over 2 million and when he gets rich he will buy himself a Lamborghini. Qing remembered what Dean told her when they were still in university he said his favorite car was the Pagani Zonda. Dean told her that the car was now worth 28 million, and if he worked all his life, he couldn't buy it. A friend exclaimed to him that there was a Zonda parked near his car. He ran and saw it, he couldn't believe his eyes. Lin told him to step away from his car, and told Qing to get in. Ding and his girlfriend couldn't believe that the driver from Baba had such a car. Lin gave them advice not to let the poverty limit their thinking. Then he and Qing left together, Qing asked him to forgive her friends for such behavior, but he did not care, he asked her if he could give her a ride home but she had some wine and wanted to go to the beach to sober up. Lin said it wasn't a bad idea to get some fresh air to weatherize the alcohol. He got a notice that if he got 10 times 5 stars, he would get a reward of 100,000 points and a skill of 6 out of 10. When they got to the beach, Qing asked him to turn away. Lin asked her, do you really want to change into a bathing suit? but she said she just wanted to take off her stockings to walk on the sand. Lin said, then why would he turn away, he asked what she was afraid of, isn't she wearing underwear? She said she has everything on, Qing started to take off her stockings and said he could not turn away. Then they got out of the car and she told him that her parents keep telling him to take him to grandpa's birthday party and she wanted to ask him something. But he interrupted her and said he agreed to pretend to be her boyfriend, but only because he liked the way she was doing squats. Suddenly she saw the lights on in Juzhouch, and Lin asked her what was strange about it. Qing said that the real estate in Juzhou was very expensive and there was no way they could sell it, and this was the first time she saw Juzhou lit up. Lin told her that he could take her there so she could look closer, and besides, they could sleep there. She laughed at his suggestion because she could only dream about it. He took her by the hand and led her there so she could see everything for herself. Once she got there he said she had bid on this property, but due to lack of money, she pulled out in the first round of the auction. Lin was surprised at her admiration at the sight of the gate. Qing said it was just curiosity, and she had heard that the pools in Juzhouch are filled with mineralized water. Suddenly he took her hand and offered to test it, 
but Qing said he could not just go in there. Lin asked what would happen if he could get her in. She said in that case she would put on her bathing suit and go swimming and he could get a good look at her. They got in the car and as they drove through the gate she was very surprised, the security worshipped him, she thought the security here was the highest level. Qing asked why they were allowed in so easily, he laughed and replied that the security level was not as high as she thought. A minute later they arrived at the pool and Lin told her, isn't it time she kept her promise? Qing was embarrassed and told him that she didn't have a swimsuit with her and couldn't swim. Lin got upset and said he remembered that and next time she couldn't refuse. Qing asked him not to worry and she would keep her word and offer to go back. He asked her if she wanted to go inside and look around, she said they were very lucky to get into the yard, but going inside is an invasion of private property. She asked him to stop, but Lin told her they had nothing to fear, because no one was there. He put his finger on the fingerprint and the doors opened, Qing stood in a stupor and couldn't believe it. Lin told her that he only bought it yesterday, and since she was here, he wanted to give her a tour. Qing started to beat him up, because he tricked her on purpose to see her in a bathing suit. Once inside, she said it was very beautiful, she asked, how much did he pay for this villa, Lin said he couldn't remember exactly, but he gave about several billion. Qing told him that he was cheating her again, because the most expensive villa here costs 1,200,000, and one villa can't cost several billion unless he bought all the villas. He sat on the chair and said he did and he bought all the villas. Qing didn't understand where he got so much money. She sat down on the couch and told him that it was so easy for him to make so much money, and that Baba he was working for his soul. Lin told her that he wouldn't take her anywhere at night and offered to choose a room to sleep over, she agreed to stay with him, but she warned that she had to go to work tomorrow morning. She asked him if he had women's pajamas. Lin replied that he lived here alone, and he wouldn't peep on her if she slept naked. But she said she couldn't sleep naked in someone else's house, Lin said he would now look for her a set of his new pajamas and give her. After a while Lin was taking a hot shower and suddenly he heard strange noises and Qin asked him to come in the bathtub. Qin told him he could come in since she had fallen. Opening the door she said she had twisted her leg and asked him to help her shower. Lin helped her get up and at that moment they kissed, he asked her if the water was too hot and at that moment her towel suddenly fell. She woke him in the morning and said that she was late for work. He told her that he had worked for her at night and now still owed. But she told him to get dressed quickly and she would give him five stars if he drove her to the company. He drove her to work and arrived at the Bandau Hotel, he didn't have time to eat breakfast, so he was going to do it now before taking new orders. She told the manager that she came here to eat breakfast. The manager wanted to prepare him a special place but Lin told him he didn't want to stand out. After a while he called the waiter to order, but the waitress recognized him, Lin recognized her too, her name is Lily, he never thought she would work here. She called him a jerk, as she didn't expect him to immediately complain about her after he quit. He asked her indignantly, what kind of customer attitude is this? Lily told him, just because he sleeps with a rich lady doesn't mean he is worthy to be in Bandau. But another waitress tried to stop her, she told her that this is no ordinary customer. Lily replied that Lin used to be her subordinate until he picked up the company director, if not for her money, Lin could never afford to have breakfast here. Lin asked the waitress to get manager Wan. Lily indignantly asked how does he know their manager, and manager Wang wouldn't waste his time, on someone like him. He told her that since they were former colleagues, he would teach her a lesson. At that moment manager Wang ran up and she told him, Lin is making a scene here and we should call security and kick him out. He told her to shut up now and said that Lin was the boss and now security would kick her out. Lily was furious she refused to believe it, after all he had recently been her co-worker. Wang told security to escort her out and said he would add her to a blacklist after this situation, 
after which she could not get a job at any hotel. Wang apologized to Lin for spoiling his appetite. He said it was okay but asked him not to hire any more people with bad temper. After a while he got an unexpected phone call from Baba's vice president saying her name was Tian and she'd like to meet him at his convenience. He said he was busy and would contact her himself after lunch. Assistant Xiao asked her if she could make an appointment with him, Tian said that Lin had told her he would contact her after lunch, so she decided to go to Jelishi. Xiao said she would call her a car. At that moment Lin went outside and he received a notice about a new order from the Bandao Hotel to Jelishi, he thought it would be stupid not to take that order. Five minutes later Tian left the hotel and Lin asked her if she had ordered a car. When she saw him, she hesitantly said yes, and thought, her driver is very handsome. Lin told her to get in the car, but she wondered, what was he talking about? And is he really the driver from Baba? He replied that he really is a driver from Baba and asked to get in the car. After getting into his car she said that she had never seen a man so much love his hobby to work as a driver in a sports car before, she asked must all girls come to admire in this car. Lin said that it's usually girls like that who say such things, and why does everyone think an ordinary cab driver can't drive a Pagani? But suddenly she exclaimed to him that he should watch his words and actions so as not to tarnish Baba's reputation, or else he will be fired. He asked her, does she have the authority to fire people? She said she was the vice president of Baba and how could he ask if she had the authority or not? Lin replied that anyone can talk about all kinds of nonsense and said he had Baba shares. She handed him her business card and said she was telling the truth. Lin was surprised and said he was not lying either, because he recently bought 21% of the company's shares, he asked her if she had called him to arrange a meeting. She was shocked and asked if he was Mr. Lin. Suddenly she started apologizing to him and asked for a chance to talk to him. He told her he would talk to her a little later as he had some work to do. After he arrived Tian told him she would definitely contact him a little later. She wanted to pay for the trip but payment was not accepted, Lin opened his phone saw a notice that he violated company rules, a decision was made to suspend him from work. Lin suggested, is it really all because of that complaint? He asked Tian, what did Baba have to do with jealousy? Tian said that they were their coastal communications department. Tian could not allow jealousy to cause displeasure to a major shareholder, because otherwise they would be finished. She told Lin not to worry about anything and she would sort it out herself and promise to fire whoever was responsible. But Lin said he would go with her. They boldly opened the door and entered the office, where at that moment were all the heads of different departments, he asked them who were they to barge in in the middle of negotiations. Lin told them his name and asked if he was the one who suspended him, after all he came to talk to them. Luo, the communications department manager, turned to general manager Jelishi Lu, saying it was his department's work and told him to deal with it immediately. He Lu came up to Lin in a rage asking where the dumbass came from, he said there was a complaint against Lin and so he suspended him and told him to get out of here otherwise he will call security. Lin sat down on the couch and asked Tian to sort things out. She yelled at Lu and said how dare he suspend an employee who didn't understand the situation, she as the vice president of Baba Company fires Lu from his position. Tian gave them her business card and she was shocked, and now they were convinced that she really is the vice president. Luo asked him what was the matter and why did Lu dare disturb the company vice president. Luo said Lin is suspected of insulting a passenger, and this affects the company's reputation. Tian asked him if he had communicated with the person who left the complaint. She told them that Lin had recently purchased 21% of Baba and was now the company's second most important shareholder, she asked, would such a person insult passengers? Luo and Lu asked in awe, is she not joking, because Lin is the driver. Tian said what does it matter, 
because maybe Lin has decided to study the company from within, she asked how could they without understanding the merits of the matter, accuse Lin of insulting the passenger. Tian said they were fired. Luo nervously asked Lu how he by not performing his duties could last so long in his position, he told him to apologize to Lin right away and threatened to kill Lu. Lu was greatly frightened and knelt down in front of Lin and begged for his forgiveness. But Lin put his foot on his shoulder and asked, where did his courage go? After all, it's likely that with this attitude, not a few people have suffered because of Lu. Lin said that he as a shareholder fully supports Tian's decisions. Suddenly Qin called him, Lin asked Tian to take care of the rest, and he will come as to answer the urgent call.